Hey everybody and welcome back to In Scripture. I'm Father Joshua Whitfield at St. Rita Catholic Community in Dallas, Texas. In this segment we are looking at Mark chapter 7 verses 9 through 13. Uh, verses 1 through 23 really form one piece, but uh, uh, to make it manageable we are dividing those verses up into smaller segments. And so uh, in, in this section we look only at verses 9 through uh, 13. But let us begin, as we always do, in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. O Lord, give to your people, we pray you, the spirit of truth and of peace, that they may know you with all their minds, and that following with all their hearts after those things which are pleasing to you, they ever may possess the gifts of your bountiful goodness. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us uh, dive in and, and read verses 9 through 13 together. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, what you would have gained from me is korban, that is, given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition, which you hand on. And many such things you do. It's a short uh, section, as I said, you know, verses 1 through 23 really uh, is, is one passage, uh, but it's just easier for us um, to, to break them up into smaller segments um, to, to, to um, you know, uh, hear the, the larger introduction uh, about this portion of Matthew, uh, Mark's gospel. Um, it's really, you can go back to the previous episode uh, where I, I talked about the larger context of chapter 7. Uh, for this segment, however, uh, all we really need to do is to recall uh, the, the, the very previous verse, verse 8, uh, where Jesus said, um, you, you remember that the Pharisees asked Jesus a question, and he didn't really even answer them. He just immediately jumped in and, and accused the Pharisees and the scribes of hypocrisy. The substance really summarized in verse 8, where, where he says, you leave the commandment of God and hold fast the traditions of men. You could even translate, you abandon the commandment of God and hold fast to the traditions of men, cling to the traditions of men. Jesus is, is saying in substance to the Pharisees and the scribes that, that the written Torah uh, cannot be, um, you know, changed or, or, or or denigrated or forgotten for the sake of the oral Torah. Jesus is, is making a, a, a strong uh, stand on, on, on the law of Moses versus the written law of Moses, I should say, uh, versus what's called the oral Torah. And, and it's verse, verses 9 through 13, this segment, that uh, this section uh, that, that, that um, it, it, Jesus offers a specific example uh, of of the traditions of men. One, as it, as it says in the text, of, of many such things. Um, and so, so let's dive in. Uh, verse 9. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. Uh, it, it, it's, it's almost a verbatim repeat of, uh, of verse 8, right? Um, verse 8, you leave the commandment of God and hold fast to the traditions of men. Verse 9, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. Some translate uh, the sentence as a question, right? Uh, and, and you get similar to verse 6, um, that, that uh, ironic use of the word kalos, right? In verse 6, he says, well, did, you, did Isaiah prophesy kalos? Uh, beautiful. It was beautiful the way you've... Uh, that, that Isaiah talked about, you guys. Um, same word here in verse 9, you know, kalos. Uh, 
you have a callous way, you have a, you have a beautiful way of rejecting uh, the commandment of God, right? So, the, so again, um, Jesus' uh, irony, his, his snarkiness toward the Pharisees is, is on full display. And, and, and again, he's talking about the, the, the end toll, the, ca the commandment of God, right? So he's talking about written scripture versus uh, Pharisaic understanding of the oral Torah, of the tradition. And, and here it's, it's, if you follow the verbs, it, it um, uh, you, you really see the point, right? So, so in verse 8, you leave the commandment of God, you abandon the commandment of God. In verse 9, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God. And, and then down in verse uh, 13, uh, you make void the word of God, right? So, so these verbs really sort of hammer the point of, of leaving the commandment of God, of rejecting the commandment of God, of nullifying the word of God. Um, and often in scripture, when you follow the verbs, uh, you really s <laughs> learn what, what the text is actually trying to say. Uh, so in verse 10, uh, for Moses said, honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father and mother, let him surely die. Here Jesus again quotes the Septuagint version of Exodus chapter 20 and 21, right? The, 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 the commandment to honor thy father and mother. And, and, and again, you know, Jesus is taking, taking stand on Mosaic law. So he says, as Moses said, um, in, in Matthew's version of this encounter, uh, Jesus says, for God said, right? So, so it's, it, it's, it's a strong play against uh, the, the, the tradition built upon the interpretation of Pharisees. Um, in verse 11, uh, but you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, uh, what you have gained from me is korban, that is given to God. Um, korban uh, is a you know untranslated word here in Mark's gospel, um, you know, w w which just means gift or offering, uh, as as it says in, in parentheses in, in my translation. Um, <clears throat> you know, th 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 there's there's actually little evidence of, of this as a precise custom, uh, and in fact, the Mishnah, which is this collection of the oral tradition, uh, which is a few centuries later. Um, it, it expressly forbids this, right? And so, so it's quite possible. Remember, if, if this is, um, you know, uh, it, it, remember the first world and the second world. If this is the second world, Mark's world, Mark's community, um, uh, trying to, to articulate something to a, to a largely Gentile audience, um, you know, perhaps. Uh, th this is a critique of, of a stylized um, custom, right? Uh, especially if we, we have no evidence of it being a, 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 a custom in actual practice. You know, this could be a stylized custom uh, um, that, that, that Mark is, you know, describing to, to illustrate a deeper spiritual point. And, and that point, that deeper spiritual point is a simple one and that is human customs can't nullify fundamental biblical precepts, right? Um, a religious donation, for example, or, or a, a religious vow, um, you know, cannot relieve you of the, of the fundamental or moral obligations sort of articulated in, in the... Um, in the Ten Commandments, for example, right? You, you know, if, if, if you're going to take a, a, a lesser religious vow that somehow forces you to not honor father and mother, well, then that, that lesser religious vow, um, you know, there's a problem there, right? And, 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 and that's the spiritual point that, that Jesus and Mark's gospel is trying uh, to make. Um, you know, you, you, you can't make a religious donation, for example, um, uh, and expect to be relieved uh, of the burden of caring for your parents, um, which is exactly what Jesus says in, in verse 12, you know, then no longer permit him to do uh, anything for his uh, father or mother. You know, th this is exactly the, the sort of example that Jesus is is landing on here in, in this section.
um, uh, and and it, and it it sort of fits with other conflicts that Jesus has in the Gospels, right? For example, uh, healing someone on the Sabbath, right? Um, he heals the man with a withered hand on the Sabbath. Uh, healing generally is a good thing. Uh, however, uh, certain people, scribes and Pharisees and so on, uh, get bent out of shape because it violates their interpretation of what of, 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 of the Sabbath and how the Sabbath should be honored and respected, right? It's a good thing for them to honor the Sabbath, but, but it, it, it's, it's, it's silly to absurd to cruel um, their particular account of how one honors the Sabbath. And that's, that's, what, that's the point Jesus is, is making, right? And it also fits, again, with the sort of cluelessness of, of you know, witnessing the, the feeding the 5,000. This, this wondrous miracle uh, and and then instantly worrying about uh, whether or not people have washed their hands right and, and so and so G Jesus is attacking that sort of um, uh, fetish almost right to, to use that word and, and again you, this is a human sort of foible uh, you, you see it in Catholicism, every single day of the week. Uh, you know, um, pe people, uh, you know, too worried uh, uh, about the exact and proper execution of, of uh, ritual uh, or of worship. Um, you know, it, 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 ritual and worship are beautiful and we should, we should strive to be reverent and strive for the beauty of holiness and, and all of that. However, um, we, we must, you know, have a have a, uh, a gentleness and lightness of touch about it, be, uh, be, because um, you know the, the the ritual by itself, uh, without grace, without heart, uh, does not matter, right? And, and 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 that is what, as Catholics, we must always always uh, remember. But again, you know, that's not just a Catholic problem. Um, you see it in, in, in Protestantism uh, as well in different ways, right? And, and, and so the, the way Mark's telling this story, uh, Korban, this, this custom of Korban, uh, which very well may be sort of a stylized custom uh, to, to illustrate the deeper spiritual point. Uh, Mark uses it to, to illustrate this larger this larger issue and, and that's why you get um, in in verse 13 uh, the phrase and many such things right uh, th this is meant to be uh, an example of a larger spiritual problem and and and, and that spiritual problem uh, it is this in verse 13 by focusing solely and only on ritual uh, to 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 uh, in, to such an extent that it, that it, that it contradicts um, or, or it prevents us from uh, being obedient and living up to uh, the clear moral law of God, right? The clear biblical precepts to honor thy father and mother, and so on and so forth. Um, then then then. As in verse 13, it says, you, you thus make void the word uh, uh, of God uh, through your, the traditions that you hand on, right? Um, and, and so, uh, you know, I mean, this is where you can think of that third world, which is ours, right? And you have to ask yourself, um, am, I, am I hung up on, 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 a, on a ritual uh, or on a detail of practice uh, to such an extent that I am um, faltering in my more basic obligation to, to, to love God and neighbor. Uh, for example, right, you know, the, the debate within Catholicism of, or, you know, among Catholic people, I should say, um, about whether to receive communion in the hand or on the tongue, right? The church is clear; both are acceptable, right? Um, 
but but you know if if you uh, uh, see someone receive communion on the tongue reverently and and you immediately judge that person uh, to be you know overly scrupulous or overly traditional or what what have you. Well, you know, clearly you've, you've got a problem, right? Because because you're 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 allowing some sort of view or take on 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 ritual practice to uh, affect your your love for that person, and vice versa, right? So so if if you feel strongly that reception of communion on the tongue is a is a really important thing, it's a beautiful thing, uh, but but when you see someone receive communion on the hand, which I said quite clearly, and the church is quite clear, is perfectly acceptable. Um, and, and in fact, you know, the successors of the apostles themselves uh, have been recommending that we do that. And whenever you have things like pandemics, um, uh, when you see someone receiving communion in the hand and, 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 and you judge that person, um, well, then you, you're entering the, the strange, bizarre world of a pharisaical thinking, right? And and so that, that's how this is relevant, right? And I say all this just—I mean, we could we can think in these terms and and, and use this as a as a as a text for self-reflection, self-examination, uh, in many different ways. Um, we have to be careful uh, that that. Our, our particular understanding of the traditions of men, whether they're Pharisaical or Protestant or Catholic, um, you know, the danger is, is 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 that if we if we don't if, if we don't under, understand uh, the way we use and sometimes abuse these things, um, the danger is it could uh, make void the Word of God, nullify the Word of God, as it says in verse thirteen. Um, now it's interesting, you know, in, in verse eight and, and verse nine, where we're talking about leaving the commandment of God and re and rejecting the commandment of God. Here it says nullifying not the commandment but the word of God. Now there's a there's an ambiguity there that, that I think might be a deliberate. Uh, you know, in the first world, just think of the first world, uh, the world of uh, of the story which Mark is telling himself. Uh, clearly, the word of God is Torah, right? And, and so Jesus is saying just what he's been saying in verse eight and verse nine is that is that by over relying and misusing the oral Torah, uh, you, you're you're nullifying the the written Mosaic law. Right, that's what that's what it means in the first world. Now in the second world, right, uh, the world of Mark's community later on in the first century, uh, the word of God came to mean the gospel. Right, came to mean the truth of Jesus. Uh, the tradition of Jesus handed on by the apostles, right? And, and, and so you can see how uh, the, 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 the later first century Markan community would have taken that verse and that, especially particularly that phrase uh, about nullifying the word of God and, and they would have used it as a phrase to begin self-examination, right? Uh, which is the beauty of scripture, right? And, and, and further, as, as I've been doing when talking about Catholic ritual and things like that, you know, it, it, for the third world, that is our, our world, the, the, the world of the contemporary reader of the text, um, you, you know, the word of God means the word of God. I mean, the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and how it relates to us. Um, and, and so you see a, a, a versatile text that, you know, uh, which tells a story which was which was controversial in the days of Jesus himself, uh, and, and a story which was, in, in its in its retelling, applied to debates and controversies uh, in, in early Christianity, in, later in the first century, early second century, uh, and, and which can still be applied in, in our world. Which is which is why scripture uh, remains profoundly relevant, um, and and, and uh, scripture is like a well you can always go back to and and uh, 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 drink brand new water, uh, fresh. It's beautiful. Um, so that that's verses nine through thirteen. We will in the next section uh, look 
at verses 14 through 23, and that will uh, have got us through uh, the first large section of chapter 7. Uh, as I've been saying all, all along, verses 1 through 23 uh, really constitute a, a single passage, uh, but for the sake of uh, making it all manageable for us, <clears throat> I've decided to break them up into three different sections. Uh, but enjoy reading, and uh, I'll see you next time.